Come, come, whoever you are, you are welcome here. No matter your age, your size, the color of your eyes, your hair, your skin, you are welcome here. No matter your gender, whom you love, how you speak, or whatever your abilities, you are welcome here. You are welcome here whether you come with laughter in your heart or tears in your eyes. You are welcome here. No matter what you have experienced in the past, no matter what awaits you in the future, you are welcome here. Whether you believe in God all of the time, or some of the time, or none of the time, you are welcome here. This is a community of open minds, loving hearts, and willing hands. As we gather this morning, let us pause and acknowledge that the ground upon which we gather is the ancestral and current home of the Shoshone, Paiute, Goshoot, and Ute tribes. With humility for the ways in which we have unwittingly participated in the harms perpetuated in the past and present, we seek now to learn a new way forward. We begin to partner to ally and witness with our indigenous siblings and friends the bringing forth of a new sacred dream of a community restored and a world healed. <laughs> South Valley. <laughs> South Valley donates 10% of our building use fees to the Urban Indian Center in Salt Lake City as part of our efforts to make real our commitments to justice for Native peoples. Good morning, I am Susan Azagiri, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Welcome to all gathered with us here in the sanctuary and those at home in our virtual audience. We extend an especially warm welcome to those of you who are with us for the first, second, or third time. We are so glad you are here with us and we look forward to getting to know you. We encourage our newcomers to complete a connection card which can be found in the online order of service or on our website. Good morning, church. I am the Reverend Laura Young, and I think we have definitely proven that the less chairs I put out, the more likely you are to come to church. Uh, so thank you, as thank you to my volunteers for stepping in and, and grabbing the chairs that we so quickly put away at 940 this morning. <laughs> Can 
standing while we light our chalice. Can I have a volunteer come light the chalice, one of our children or youth? Oh, Paige, you can come do it too. Okay. Excellent. I'll get you. Yeah, let's move that right there. Don't light the minister on fire today. Okay. They're in your order of service, the words. Join me in your actions. We light this chalice for the warmth of love, for the light of truth, and for the energy of action. Okay, you may be seated. I'd like to invite all those who are young and young at heart to come forward for a children's story. Okay. This story is called bad hair does not exist <laughs> pelo malo no existe and is written by Soma arzu brown and illustrated by isidra sabio my hair is curly i pelo crespo my hair is straight i pelo lacio we don't have bad hair because bad hair does not exist. Pero pelo malo no existe. My hair is short. Ay, pelo corto. My hair is long. Ay, pelo largo. We don't have bad hair because what is it? bad hair does not exist. Pero pelo malo no existe. My hair is combed. I pelo penado. I hope I'm getting that right. I practiced a little before church. My hair is tousled. I pelo despenado. We don't have bad hair because bad hair does not exist. Pero palomalo no existe. So the next time, you know what your part is to say, right? Excellent. Would you like to come up here with me and read the story? Okay. There are all types of hair. I todo clase de pelo. Say pelo. 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 Good. And all hair is good. Y todo pelo. Pelo. Es bueno. My hair is red. I pelo rojo. My hair is blonde. I pelo rubio. We don't have bad hair because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Pero palomelo no existe. My hair is white. I pelo blanco. My hair is black. I pelo negro. We don't have bad hair because bad hair does not exist. Pero pelo malo no existe. My hair is afro. I pelo afro. My hair is mohawk. I pelo mohawk. We don't have bad hair because bad hair does not exist. Pero pelo malo no existe. You're catching on. I like that. There are all types of hair. I todo clase de pelo, and all hair is good. Y todo pelo. es bueno. My hair is loose. I pelo suelto. suelto. My hair is braided. I pelo entrenzado. We don't have bad hair because it doesn't exist. Bad hair does not exist. Pero pelo malo no existe. My hair has dreadlocks. I pelo rasta. My hair is wavy. I pelo colocho. Looking at Kim. <laughs> we don't have bad hair because bad hair does not exist. Pero, pelo, pelo, malo, no, existe. existe. Great. Okay, can you get that whole line? Pero, pelo, malo, no, existe. Pero, pero, 
Pelo. Pelo. Malo. Malo. No existe. No existe. Very good. There are all types of hair. I total clase de pelo. And that's, that's fine. And all hair is good. Y todo pelo es bueno. Play with your hair. Juego, juega con tu pelo. Have fun with your hair. Divier, divi, di, yes, divertete con tu pelo. No, that wasn't right. Um, love your hair. Ama tu pelo because por qué? Bad hair does not exist. Your hair is good. Tu pelo es bueno. Okay. And that's our story for the day. We have children's activity downstairs, an art project with Julianne. So if you'd like to go down there, you can do that. Parents, you're welcome to stay up here or go down with them. There is a screen that you can watch the service from downstairs as well, if you'd like. This community, our church, and its many ministries are only made possible by the gifts you give of your time, your talent, and your treasure. Many of you pledge monthly to support our work, and for this we are grateful. Your gifts help to ensure that we are able to live our values of love and justice in the world outside. Part of our ministry at South Valley includes sharing our Sunday worship offerings with a charitable organization that aligns with our principles and values. Our giving partner for September and October is the Great Salt Lake Institute at Westminster University. We believe that this program supports our seventh UU principle, respect for the interdependent web of life. Please join me in reading our offertory words they are printed in your order of service. We are this church. We are its hands, its heart, its voice. Together we share the wealth of this community and sustain it with our gifts. We will now accept the offering. For those at home, you are invited to use the giving link in the online order of service.
Thank you, Peter, for sharing your gifts with us this morning. For all we have received and all we have found the courage to give, may we be truly grateful. May these gifts be a blessing on South Valley and on the Great Salt Lake Institute at Westminster. I invite you now to join me in a time of prayer. This psalm is adapted from a colleague of mine, and it's based on Psalm 22, verse 1, which reads, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. Beloved, spirit of life, our hearts have been breaking in so many ways. As faithful Unitarians, Universalists, we are accustomed to holding tension between multiple truths. But today, this week, this month, this year, that capacity has been challenged. We can and we do denounce the egregious acts of Hamas, acts that have led to unspeakable loss of life and hope. We also denounce the indiscriminate retaliation of Israel against the Palestinian people, both Christian and Muslim. We are watching a growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. We see Israelis and families around the world in an agonizing wait for word about the fate of loved ones killed or taken hostage. I refuse to collapse these complexities into simple binaries or throwaway statements on social media. We are a multi-faith religious tradition and among us are Palestinian, Jewish, and Muslim Unitarian Universalists who are fearful for their families, their communities, and their homelands. In our communities, we have Jewish and Muslim neighbors who are also facing the horrors of this crisis and the impact on their loved ones, who are facing a difficult and complex rise in both Islamophobia and, in, again, and anti-Semitism. We continue to believe that the web of relationships that bind us together as a congregation and a faith and place us in deep friendship and collaboration with our interfaith community matters. We must also call a thing a thing. The power exist, exerted against the Palestinian people through the occupation, the expansion of settlements, and the escalating violence must be called out. We are committed to holding up this truth. We actively avoid collapsing this complexity. We hold hope that there is a pathway to right relationship, to healing, and ultimately peace that can emerge. God, hear our prayer for all of the people and for the land itself, the land itself bombarded and destroyed and poisoned. The God who liberates us God who liberates us, please sustain us and help us to be a liberating witness. Amen. I'd like to invite Dion forward to share a reading with us. 
Shivim Parahar, a Salt Lake City high school senior, wrote an op-ed in the Salt Lake Tribune last month. These are his words. The most visceral moments in my life were spent drifting to sleep on a piece of cardboard. Each and every day in my elementary school classrooms was spent in burning shame, knowing that my peers ate fresh food I would have to do with McDonald's dollar menu and gas station fare. As they rested in furnished homes, I would sleep under the stars and pray against the rain. The confusing turmoil of my personal circumstances and the effects of the ripples of re recession on my parents' finances left me carried from shelter to shelter and eventually sleeping on a piece of cardboard dragged from the back of the Sugar House Deseret Industries to the other side of I-80 in view of the Sugar House Park. My first night sleeping on the streets, I was a mere eight years old. My family and I immigrated to the United States from India six years before, moving to join family on my American side in Salt Lake City after a brief stay in Albuquerque. A move that spiraled into my first night spent in a homeless shelter my first memories of Salt Lake City. Yet, as the elements of poor weather hovered over Salt Sugar House Park and creeped ever closer, I could take comfort in knowing that the old road home and our community's expansive network of overflow shelters would be there to shield me from the bitter cold of a Salt Lake City winter alongside a fast-growing network of accessible housing. But today, the public housing project I reside in has a wait time of two years. I do not have to do more than open my door today to see encampments and addiction. Every corner of Salt Lake City particularly my downtown community, seems to bear witness daily to the pinnacle of human suffering. I am certain that I speak for every formerly homeless person in Salt Lake City when I say that I see myself in every encampment, in the traumas and sorrows of every pair of despondent eyes deprived of basic dignity as our shelters stand at capacity, winter fast approaching. Were I homeless today, I don't know if I would make it out alive or if my death would be valued enough to be counted. Based on a Salt Lake Tribune expose from May, the headline read, after five people died this winter, Salt Lake City stopped taking count. The lack of care from city officials was demonstrated in Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall's initial opposition to a sanctioned campground and willingness to reduce the fight of our homeless neighbors in a squabble between city and state authority. I'll bite one community accumulating in a recent approval of a sanctioned camp for the city's unhoused population, alongside one funded by the state. Even as Salt Lake City's housing crisis locks even more residents, particularly of my generation, out of the market, Mendenhall has opposed Salt Lake City taking an active role in directly developing non-market housing proposals that have found wide success in expanding housing access in areas such as Maryland's Montgomery County, likening such proposals to infamously crime-ridden projects. I wish nothing but the best for our city government as I wish nothing for the best for the Salt Lake community I so love. But that community 
includes our homeless residents and support for abatements, for the closure of public restrooms. I fail to see compassion towards our most vulnerable reflected in Salt Lake City's treatment of the unhoused. My name is Paige Spicer and my pronouns are she and hers. And I was asked to speak on my experience on the anti-racism task force after our first year. So the first thing I want to try to answer is how did I get here on this committee? <clears throat> when Reverend Laura made the announcement for volunteers for this committee a year ago, I felt called to be here as part of my ongoing spiritual personal development. As a poster stated in the clinic where I went for physical therapy, life begins outside your comfort zone. Another memorable poster at a gym stated, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. I have felt both challenged and changed by my experience on this committee in positive ways. It has been an exciting and sometimes tumultuous process with the committee and all that everyone wanted to do. Some highlights of my experience on the committee included joining with other UU groups in and outside of this state and learning about the process of dismantling racism through reading Mistakes and Miracles and meeting on Zoom to discuss it. I felt that our planning for the spring movie night to view here, The Hate You Give, and the group discussions afterward, where we shared very personally, was deeply connecting. And I'm so grateful for that. Our meetings where we planned for the new signage on the church building, now voted on by the congregation and hanging outdoors, have been a climax of our first year because it's opened the way for more change. I really want to thank everyone on the committee for their commitment and presence to this ongoing process of change.
Good morning. My name is Becky Condis, and my pronouns are she and her. I was asked to speak to you today about my experience as a volunteer at the Volunteers of America Youth Resource Center. I want to tell you a little bit about me and my journey to South Valley first. I was born and raised Catholic. I graduated from Judge Memorial Catholic High School here in Salt Lake City. I got married in the Catholic Church. My husband and I raised our two daughters in the Catholic Church, and they also graduated from Judge Memorial. I attended St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church since 1997 when I moved to West Valley City. And I wrestled with the Catholic Church internally for most of my life. Because while there are many beautiful things that I loved and probably still love about the Catholic Church, I could not stop being angry every time I went to church. The church's messages seemed in conflict with the teachings of Jesus Christ, and I could no longer abide the hypocrisy, nor did I feel it was spiritually healthy of me to spend so much time angry and in conflict. So in late 2019, I decided to go find another church home. I tried three different Episcopal churches, and then the pandemic hit. It was a great time to church shop, as so many churches put their services online. <laughs> I sat home and watched portions of many different church services, and I thought about what I wanted in a church community. I wanted a community that stood for equality for all people. I wanted a community that talked about the complexity of the world. I wanted a community that acknowledged in real time when tragedies happened and helped their people manage emotions in such events. I wanted a community that had a book group. And I wanted a community that had an action arm for social justice issues. This last one, social justice action, comes straight from my Catholic upbringing. The Catholic Church has a very long history of caring for people that are marginalized. Catholic Community Services of Utah has terrific programs for refugees and a food bank, among many other services. St. Vincent de Paul has a soup kitchen. Holy Cross Ministries has a very active base of, of attorneys working for immigration rights. These fine programs were always talked about in circles I was in, but I never had volunteered because it was one step away from being easy to jump in. I work full time. I was at work during the day when many volunteer opportunities were scheduled. The retirees at my Catholic church were the ones who had time to volunteer. So I also wanted a community that made volunteering easy and meaningful. In the summer of 2021, after all my internet watching of church services, I found South Valley Unitarian Universalist Society. I watched for many weeks online. Every single item on my list of wants was present at South Valley. It was time to go in person, and so I did around two years ago. I knew I needed to jump into some groups in order to meet people. It was a lot for my introverted self to undertake. Texting Susan to sign up to serve at the Youth Resource Center was at the top of my list, and I started volunteering, usually coming to serve breakfast on Saturday mornings once a month or so. I noticed several things when I started volunteering. How young the clients are, how much they act like any teenagers I know. They're particular about the food. They don't like vegetables so much. 
They want a lot, and I mean a lot, of whipped cream on their French toast. <laughs> or a lot, a whole lot, of cream and sugar in their coffee. Their coffee. <laughs> they like grapes. They say thank you. They appreciate a good warm meal. I think about these kids and why they are there, why they might be unhoused. Volunteering at the Youth Resource Center makes me consider the weather in a more immediate way. I wonder about the teens. What do they do during the day? I think about city policies and think about decisions that Mayor Mendenhall has made. What our legislature does and what they could do. I think about how Salt Lake City is home to one of the wealthiest churches in the world. I only volunteer at the Youth Resource Center once in a while. At some point, I'd like to go more regularly. Someday I hope to put more action in my activism. For now though, I think about how when I'm at the center, there is no me. There is no time to think about myself or my problems, worries, chores. The present moment is all that matters. It is all consuming to pay attention to what I am doing there, whether cooking, serving food, or cleaning up. But most importantly, I am bearing witness to people's lives, lives that are different than mine, precious, vulnerable, tough, and angry, sometimes silly, sometimes demanding lives. I wish there didn't have to be a youth resource center, but since there is, I am so grateful South Valley provides this easy, meaningful way to be in proximity, to do something that matters. I'd like to invite uh, Joshua and Susan to come forward at this time. We're doing something we haven't done maybe in a long time, which is to honor all of our volunteers. And I'm gonna... Just wanted to introduce a little bit about the Volunteers of America's program that um, you know, Becky was referring to, but the Volunteers of America Utah provides lifelines for some of the most vulnerable in our community. I really, really like it that we're supporting them, including adults, families, and youth who are struggling with mental illness, addiction, um, homelessness. And we here at South Valley have been providing consistent support to the VOA's Youth Resource Center, YRC for short, for almost 12 years with our Meals for Youth program. Just to tell you a little bit, the YRC is a drop-in resource center where youth ages 15 to 22 um, can find a hot meal three times a day, access to a food pantry, showers, laundry, storage facilities, healthcare, education and life skills training, legal support, and um, only since 2016, um, a warm bed. Um, they used to have a resource center that was just in and out um, resources, but nowhere to sleep because of the laws of Utah, actually. When they finally changed those, they could provide a shelter for youth, and they have 30 beds there. Um, just a little bit, 40%, um, anyway, the, the youth are there for a myriad of reasons, and 40%, um, um, or nearly 40%, have been pushed to the margins because of their LGBTQ um, identities. Um, in, and, uh, in, uh, and here's just a few numbers about them. In 2022, the YRC served 357 youth. They provided 599 hours of case management, provided 7,367 bed nights of shelter, and they moved 54 clients to stable community housing. And currently we provide two to three meals every month. That's what uh, we do. And uh, typically anyone's um, able to be a, a team lead, but uh, Joshua and I, uh, Susan, um, have been doing several of those. In fact, we have one tonight that um, we're shy, one or two volunteers, if anybody wants to go, 
there and help serve tonight at five, please find me right after this. Um, anyway, I think this service is a fantastic way for us to serve together, kind of make a difference. It helps our community feel more connected to our larger community, which I think is so important for a healthy faith community. And, uh, and then we connect with each other when we're um, serving together. It's just a fabulous um, experience. And there are different ways to be involved. You can either just provide food items for the menu um, for the meal. Um, you can um, help um, raise funds. Sometimes we have fundraisers to help raise funds for, like tonight, we're, since we have the party today, we're ordering pizza and we're going to be taking over pizza and we'll be using some of the money that has been donated. And then um, you can volunteer just to serve. Um, so we do have and anyway, different ways for I, all, many of us to be involved. So please contact me um, or Joshua. And you have to be 16 years or older to serve at the center. So anyway, and I think uh, we, we wanted to read all the names of people who have helped volunteers over the last couple of years here. And Joshua is going to start that. Okay. So we'd like to thank um, Kat um, McGilvery, Bob McGilvery, um, Cam Eschler, Brenda Voissard, Roseanne Coleman, Kim Adams, James um, Brohammer, Sue Gar, Maria Anderson, Laura Young, Marilyn S Smith, Stephen Smith, Mitesh Yadav, Natalie Cole, Zachary Stickney, Stickney Caitlin McDonald, Paula Hayes, Becky Condes. Sarah Featherstone, John Allen, Laura and Scott Renshaw, Kristen May, Dion Corkins, Denna Wright, Alyssa Johansson, Tammy Felt, Shawnee Roberts, Judy Miller, Holly Robinson, Kristen Ward, Gigi Paisant. Sherry Lund, Kendall Christensen, Nancy Adams, Louise Cofield, Anne Scarborough, David Wilcox, Tasha Jensen, Robin Taylor Granda, Marjoram Main, Matias Azagiri, Rodrigo and Rowan Azagiri, Janice Reese, Maureen Davies, Ellen Paisant, Kevin Alvey, and Peter for sure. And I'm sure we've missed some, so I'm sorry if we did. If, we want to keep this if, you oh. have, if you've volunteered yeah. in the last couple of years, why don't you just stand so we can just see you. Get a visual, yeah. Get a visual. It is by this that we will solve the highly solvable problem of homelessness in Salt Lake Valley. It is an entirely solvable problem. And so I look forward to that day when we can celebrate the elimination of homelessness in Salt Lake Valley. So as our time of worship comes to an end today, know that worship comes to an end, but our service begins. We will extinguish our chalice and we will depart You'll go get some lunch and you'll come back for our party at two o'clock. So please stand as you are willing in body, mind, or spirit and join us in our actions as we extinguish our chalice. We extinguish this chalice, but not the warmth of love, the light of truth, or the energy of action. We hold each other in our hearts until we meet again. Please be seated for the postlude.